Hi guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Matt Garvey and we are here to talk about making comics today. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how I set up my comic pages so they can go off to the printer. But this needs to be done before your comic pages actually go off to the letterer. So, you know, it is for print, but this is what you need to do before it goes to the letterer, before you get them back. So they're all nicely set up to go to print. Okay, so let's do this. Right, on the screen at the moment, you can see a page from uh, one of my new books. It's a comic called Voodoo Cowboy that I wrote on a bet. Thanks, James. Um, and this is line work by my buddies Arunya and colors by my buddy D. Now, what you need to do first, before you start setting your comic pages up to print, you need to open up the artwork that, you know, that your artist and your colorist team have physically done. So this page isn't ready to go to print just yet. This is just the original artwork that I've got back, along with, you know, these beautiful colors as well. So once you've opened that document, what I need you to do is I need you to go up to image and I need you to go up to uh, image size up here in the top left hand corner. And then it's just there in the resolution area. That's 400 DPI. OK, so when we click OK, so that's what we're working to. So 400 DPI. OK, so from here we need to set up our document. OK, so what I need to do is going to go up here to the top left hand corner. I'm going to click on file and then I'm going to go down to new. And from here, it's going to pop up with a menu and it's going to give me some options of what my what I want my page to actually you know, look from, from a blank slate. Now, I'm working in millimeters because I'm in the UK. Uh, sorry if you're an American viewer, I know you guys work in inches, but this will work exactly the same for you guys as well. Now, what I want this to do is I want this to be a US standard size American comic. So for that, it's 176 millimeters by 266 millimeters. And I want the resolution to be 400 because I want that resolution to match the artwork that I've already got. I don't want to upscale it or downscale it, you know, because I might lose some quality. So that's what I've got to keep before. Now, this is what I bet I want you to pay special attention to. Now, it says color mode. Now, from here, it says RGB, and you can click to CMYK as well. Now, I've covered this on this channel before. You know, RGB is for computers, for tablets, for handheld devices, because, you know, they only see in red, blue, and green. If you're actually going to print your document, it needs to be in C, M, Y, and K, which is cyan, magenta, yellow, and the K stands for black. So if you are doing this before it goes to the colorist, it can go in, you can do this in RGB. But if you've got this artwork back and it's already been colored, you want to make sure that that color artwork is going to show up in its best possible way. So you, you want this template to be in CMYK. So that's what I'm going to do. Background color is white is absolutely fine. And then I'm just going to click OK and that's going to open up a new document for myself. So as you can see, we've got our nice comic book template open on the screen now. So what we need to do is we need to put in some what they call guides to help us put our artwork onto this template and keep everything lined up nicely. Now, we're going to use some uh, guidelines in Photoshop. Now, these are virtual guidelines that don't actually sit on the artwork, but they're going to allow us to put you know, our artwork on that page correctly. Plus it's also gonna let us avoid those areas that are gonna get chopped off by the printer. Because as I explained in the last video, you know, a US comic page is actually 260 by 170, but we've created this document as 266 millimeters by 176 millimeters, because we need to have that bleed on the outside that's gonna get cropped off. So we're gonna create that bleed area and then we're gonna create a safe area inside so we can be assured that whatever artwork we put in that safe area is actually gonna print really nicely. So what we need to do is we need to go up here to where it says view and then we are gonna to go to new guides just up here on the bottom. Now, if you click on that, what it's gonna do, is gonna bring up this little pop-up menu. So you've got horizontal and vertical guys that it lets you make. So it's gonna let you do lines that way and lines that way. So what we need to do is we need to remove three millimeter from each side of this document. So we're gonna start with the vertical. So I want the first guide to be at three millimeters. So I'll just type in three and mm for millimeter. And then as you can see, a blue line has just appeared on my document. I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see that. So this is the bleed area. So anything that we put in this area we're going to lose. So we want to avoid that at all costs. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom out. So that's the bleed area, basically. So we've done that on one corner. Now we need to do that on all the other corners of the document. I know this sounds like a pain in the bum, but it's something that you need to do. But then once you've got these templates to hand, they're really easy to set up. So we've done the three millimeter one. So we're going to go to view, new guide again. And then we need to subtract three millimeters from the 176 millimeters of the actual document. So that's 173. So we do 173 millimeters 
And as you can see, we ha now have two guides either side of our document. So that's the bleed zone. We, know to, we need to know we can stay out of those areas. But now we need to do that at the top and the bottom as well. So again, we're gonna go up to view, new guide, and then we're gonna click horizontal to make sure that's highlighted. And then we're just gonna go three millimeters. And as you can see, it's made that little box there at the top. So what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna zoom out again. And then we need to do one at the bottom. So new guide again. So subtract three millimeters from 266, which is 263 millimeters. And there we go. So we know we need to stay out of this area. This is the bleed area. This is the bit that's gonna be chopped off. So what I'm gonna do is, you don't have to do this. I'm just doing it for this example. I'm just gonna quickly color those in red so we can see them a little bit better on the video. Okay, so I've just zoomed in. So that area there, that is our no-go zone. So whatever artwork we put into this page, do not go near this area, do not put anything in this area because it's guaranteed you're gonna lose it, okay? So what we're gonna do now is that's the bleed area. We're actually gonna create a buffer zone, an area that you know you can technically put artwork in, but it's probably best not to, just to be safe, just to make sure that it doesn't get cropped off in any way. So what I like to do is I like to do this at a nine millimeter area all around the page. Again, other people do it a little bit differently, but I find in the comics that I've done, and I've never had any problems. Nine millimeters tend to be a, a nice safe area. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to view again. We're gonna go up to new guides. We're gonna start with a vertical again. So I'm gonna put nine millimeters in there. There we go. So that's created another line. There we go, there. So, and I'm gonna do that all the way around. So file, new guide. So 176 minus nine millimeters is 167 millimeters there we go there's another line there and then we need to do that for the top so new guide then we're going to click the horizontal button nine millimeters and then we're going to do the bottom one which is 266 minus nine millimeters which is 257 if memory serves 257 millimeters there we go. And I'm just gonna color that in just so we can see it. Okay, so as you can see, we have our nice little template with our bleed area and our buffer zone marked off by the red and the blue. Again, I'm just showing you this as an example. Don't color your areas in. This is just so I can show it in this video. Now, as well as this, I like to go one step further with regards to my guide. And I like to have the exact coordinates of you know the dead center of the page just to help me line up the artwork just a little bit more. So what we're gonna do is the great thing about the guides is not only can you do it by you know millimeters and inches, that kind of thing, you can actually do it by percentages as well. So if I go up to view and then I go up to new guides, if I type in 50 and then press the percentage key, uh, shift five in the horizontal and then click okay, that draws a line straight across the, the dead center of that page. And then if I do the exact same for the vertical line, that's gonna give me 50%. And I now have the dead center of that page. So now what we need to do is we now need to get that comic book artwork onto this template. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom out of this image. And the reason why I'm gonna zoom out of this image is because if you saw the video that I did last week, I explained you know, how an actual comic book page is actually a lot bigger than the actual original artwork that um, an artist will actually use. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the zoom key, which is just over here on the toolbar. Um, I'm just gonna hold Z and I'm gonna drag my cursor out. So I'm just gonna zoom out just so it looks a little bit smaller. Okay, so I know newer versions of Photoshop will just allow you to click and hold you know, a layer on, the, on a previous page. Uh, previous document and then just drag it over to the bar at the top and drop it in. Mine doesn't let me do that unfortunately because it's very, very old. So what I need to do is I'm just gonna unclip this page from the tab bar at the top just by clicking and holding, and just dropping it anywhere. So I'm just gonna move that by holding the bar over. So what I'm gonna do is I'm literally just gonna drop this artwork into my template. But as I said, it's gonna be a lot bigger so we now need to resize it. So I'm just gonna Click and hold the background and I'm gonna drop it onto my new document, onto my template, and there we go, that's been dropped in. I'm just gonna make this one a bit smaller. Actually, I'll put it back on. So as you can see, the comic page is way too big for the document that I've got. So what we need to do is we need to resize this document. So what we need to do is if we press Control and T, or if you don't have that, you can go to Edit and Free Transform. But the problem we have here is if I just try and shrink it normally, and move it, you know, grab these corners and pull them in, it's gonna squish and distort my comic page. And that's not what we wanna do. What we wanna do is we wanna resize it to scale so it keeps all, you know, the width and the height 
you know, in the exact, in the exact same proportions, get my words out of be handy. So I'm just gonna delete this and don't apply. And I'm just gonna drag that document in again. It's already there. In fact, that's fantastic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna resize it. So I'm gonna press Control and T and it's gonna bring up these borders and I'm just gonna zoom in just so you can see them. So at the corners and in the center of this box here, these are the points where we can actually click and drag our document. But as I said, we want it to be in the right perspective. So what you need to do is you need to hold and whatever you do, do not let go of the shift key and then just hover your cursor over the top left hand corner. And then while holding the shift key and not letting go, I'm just gonna drag that in and that keeps everything in proportion. Then I'm gonna to go to the bottom right hand corner, still not let go of shift. And I'm just gonna drag my cursor inwards to the center and I'm just gonna drag that page so it's around the right proportion size, okay? So from there, I'm gonna let go of the shift key and then I'm gonna zoom in without having to you know, commit to this shape yet. So what you need to do with that is if you press the control button and the zero button or close caption button, what it does is that fills your Photoshop screen with your screen of your monitor, okay? So that's zoomed in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the shift key again and I'm just gonna drag this artwork in just so it sits nicely within the buffer zone, within the safe zone. And I'm just gonna drag that up a little bit. So as you can see, if I zoom in a little bit and move over, you can see that this artwork is just sitting inside that buffer zone, just here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it in a little bit smaller, teeny weeny bit, just because I want it to look as best I can. I'm just gonna pull it in from all sides. And as you can see, if I zoom in again, just to the left and right of the uh, the image that I've brought in, there's um, midpoints as well. So I can see where the exact dead center is of the actual artwork. So if I want that to be dead center in the comic page, if I just tab down and it's in the center of the page, well, I can be assured that that is now dead center of that comic page as equal space at the top and at the bottom of this page and it's you know, is sitting nice and flush. So if I just press enter to commit to that, now that comic page is in that artwork. So if I turn those borders off, there we go. So that's how my artwork is actually gonna sit on this comic page. So as you can see, I've got my, let me um, put, do another layer so I can just you know mark it up so you can see it clearly. So again, I've got my, my bleed area there and then I've got my buffer zone here and here is the live area and my comic is sitting nicely in that. So I'm not gonna lose any of that artwork when it goes to print, okay? Now, one last thing I like to do is I like to make sure that every single comic page that I do sits at the same area of the top and the bottom as well because artists all work differently and some like to use a lot more dead space or blank areas in their comic book pages. So what I like to make sure is every, you know, top of the first panel is actually in line with each other. And I use this by using another guide, but this is something that I like to, you have to actually eyeball in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna go to the move tool up here in the top right hand corner. Now I'm gonna go to the rulers. So I've got rulers set up to be at the top of my screen here and the left hand of my screen. Now, if you don't have them, all you need to do is press Control and R. In my case, it may disappear, but if I press Control and R again, they reappear. So with them, you have to make sure that you've got the Move tool selected. If you click inside that ruler, so I've clicked in the center of that 70, just drag in, clicking and holding, and drag in another ruler to the top of where that artwork sits, okay? And then I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom of my document, and then I'm gonna do the same, I'm gonna make sure that my move tool is selected. I'm gonna click inside the barrier and I'm gonna hold. I'm just gonna drag it down. So pull it down to the bottom of that last panel. So what that's done is that has now marked off in this template where my artwork is gonna sit. So I can make sure that every page that I put into this template now is gonna sit within those lines. So when you're reading a comic, you know, page one doesn't look like it's here, the artwork in page two doesn't look like it's here, the artwork in page three doesn't look like it's here, and, and so forth. So it's not jumping up and down. So this is what I like to work to. So now what we need to do is we need to save this. So what I suggest doing, if this is the first comic page of this actual comic, so just file it, uh, save it as normal. So I'm gonna go save as, file and save, and then either have it as a Photoshop document, or I like to do it as a TIFF myself personally. So I'm gonna save this as a TIFF, and I'm gonna call it, you know, Voodoo Cowboy, page one. Okay, so I'm gonna save that. It's gonna pop up and say, you know, um, 
compression. I'm gonna keep it as low as possible. So I'm gonna click OK. So that's the comic page saved of the first page of Micro Comic. But now what I wanna do is I'm just gonna select all three of these layers that I've added in because I've obviously done some annotation with the borders, that kind of thing. I'm just gonna delete them, but my borders are still intact. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna to go to File, I'm gonna to go to Save As, and this is gonna be my 400 DPI template. So I've got this template to hand, so I don't have to do it for every single comic page that I can. All I've got to do is just open this document and then just drop the artwork in. And then if I get artwork that's 600 DPI, I'll create another template. So I'm gonna have a 300, 400, 500, and 600 DPI template for when the comic you know, needs it to be. And that's how easy it is. But obviously you've got these lines on. If you wanna see the artwork without the lines, all you need to do is you need to go up to view. And if you go to where it says extras, you can remove them because again, these, these don't sit on the artwork. They sit above the artwork and then, you know, down to view and extras again. That's how you create a template. And once you've done this, you now can send, you know, that artwork off to the letterer and the letterer can be assured that, you know, they just need to go in and do their job and then they can send that document back and you can ask them to send it back how you want. If this is going to be printed, I would ask to have it sent back as a high res PDF. That way you can ensure that this is going to be in the perfect format for when you send this document off or this comic off to the actual comic book printer. So hopefully you found that interesting. If you have, you know, give us a like, share and a subscribe. I will see you in the next one. And remember, if I can make comics, anyone can.